Welcome to the last part of best practices for heat generation. In this webinar, we're going to look into integrated heat generation strategies. And this is really where we put together everything we've learned so far in the previous webinars with a very simple message. In order to be successful in a heat generation campaign and further on in a drug discovery project, it is really advised to select several heat generation approaches. This will really increase your chance of finding attractive chemical matter and pick the ones that you really want to work on. So let's go back to something we already discussed in the introduction, which is the importance of identifying high quality hits to make sure that you can go fast towards a drug candidate. Now, high quality validated hit means a hit with a clear target engagement and attractive drug-like properties. That will allow you to not do further validation. Because of the attractive drug-like properties, the hit to lead generation will be fast and you will have a good target understanding. Now, obviously the challenging hits take longer to turn into a drug candidate or even fail. And obviously, if you want to identify several high quality validated hits, you really have to think hard about how you design your hit generation strategy, and in particular, how many approaches and which approaches you want to select. So let's go into a little bit more details. The idea of integrated hit generation is to use multiple hit generation strategies using different assay technologies, which are, of course, tailored to the target of interest. Again, this will improve the chance of success in your drug discovery process and also its, its speed and efficiency. Now, a couple of opportunities in more details. Obviously, if you use several strategies, you will cover a broader chemical space. You will get increased diversity in your hits and, of course, then a higher chance to identify high quality hits and select only the ones that are high quality. You can also identify hits with different modes of action, and that will allow you then later on to select the modes of actions that are most attractive in terms of efficacy and safety. And as we'll see in a minute, one really important aspect of this is that you can transfer ACR information from one hit series to the other. And I can tell you from personal experience that many breakthroughs in optimizing a chemical series really comes from insights from other scaffolds. Now, we don't always run several hit generation strategies in parallel, but it is clearly critical if we're going after difficult to drug targets. And if you read the literature, there are more and more examples now where combination of several approaches was successful while relying only on one was not. So how do we select the right approaches? Now, obviously all of this should be guided based on the properties of your target, the target you're going after and the desired biology. Now, in many cases, you don't run actually all of these approaches in parallel. It can be a continuous process during drug discovery. You should always ask yourself, is the chemical matter available? enough or do I need more? Will I get to a drug candidate with what I have? You may very often during the course of a project generate new biological insights on the target and that will allow you actually to update your strategy or use a different approach. Let's say your target works through a pathway that you've now better characterized. Maybe you can run a cell assay looking at this pathway. Also very important, the learnings from the first generation campaign really provides ideas on how to do it better next time. And last but not least, there may be new assay technologies becoming available, not necessarily new assay technologies that just came out in the literature, but maybe you couldn't have a binding assay before because you couldn't access your protein. And now you can, so why not think about running a binding assay as a hit generation approach. Now at the bottom are a few thoughts on how to consider 
the different screening approaches that we looked at in the previous webinars. So if we talk about classical screening approaches, you could combine several, for example, run a biochemical and a cellular assay, or run a high throughput and an in silico screen. You may even want to test different assays using the same compound library because it may deliver different hits. The assays ask different biological questions. The noise may be different, so you may see different false negatives and the sensitivity of the assays may be different. Finally, depending on your target, you may want to test different MOAs. Let's say you found some reversible hits. Maybe you want to try a covalent library for a difficult target class. Coming to fragment-based screening, this really may provide high value information. As we discussed during the webinar on FBS, you may sample a better chemical space and you may probe multiple binding pockets. Very often, actually, FBS is used to probe the drugability of a target. If you're able to identify fragments and pockets, this may give you hope that a more traditional or classical screening approach may also be successful. And finally, the encoded libraries and evolutionary techniques offer really the opportunity to test the largest number of compounds. So this may be called for for difficult targets. And you can even run several DEL screens with different protein constructs and conditions, which could give you different hits. Now, obviously, a combination of classical, fragment, and encoded library approaches may also give you very different and very diverse starting points. Now, let's go into a little bit more details into the opportunities of integrated head generation strategies. So one element is that you can use all of these strategies to map your binding set. If you have diverse ligands, you can analyze multiple 3D structures of protein ligand complexes and identify favorable interactions that could be combined. So you see, for example, in panel A, two different compounds, one in pink and one in green, and basically joining these two compounds, linking these two compounds led to a very significantly more potent inhibitor. This can actually be more successful than building new interactions because you start from interactions which you know are working. You can also identify multiple binding sites, for example, a orthosteric and an austeric binding site. This is, for example, what you see on the B panel in the bottom right. And you can explore the flexibility of the proteins and the ligand-induced binding pockets. So what you see in the panel C at the bottom is that upon ligand binding, the tryptophan, which is colored in red in the left panel, has been moved. It can be difficult to predict these ligand-induced binding pockets, but if you know they exist, you can design elements, groups in your molecules that will induce them. The knowledge transfer between two hit series is really something very powerful. And we discussed it briefly in the previous slide, but here we show a more complete example. So here, the researchers combine key ACR elements identified from, on the one hand, a fragment-based screen and a high-throughput screen. And these are RASOS inhibitors. So on the left side of this slide, you see a picture of a co-crystal structure of a fragment hit bound to the RAS-SOS complex. And despite being only in the low millimolar range, this fragment makes a very interesting interaction through this amine, which forms hydrogen bonds with aspartate 8A7 and tyrosine 8A4. In addition, it makes a cation pi interaction with tyrosine 8A4. In the middle, you have the same, but with an HDS hit, in complex with RAS-SOS. And you see that, in particular, what's interesting here is that the quiznazoline fills a pocket that was not addressed with the fragment. And the NH here makes a key hydrogen bond interaction with asparagine 879. Now, what you see on the right is that the authors have actually combined these interactions into a single compound, where you have the amine, which interacts with the two residues, and the lower gonalazoline, which fills the lower pocket. And this leads to a compound with 21 nanomolars, so much more potent 
then the HDS hit itself. So this is a great example of the power of knowledge transfer between two series and two series that were identified through different and complementary generation strategies. Now, of course, you could have argued that one could have built in this amine interaction on the HDS hit, but probably that would have been much more difficult because you don't know a priori whether this interaction will be productive and how exactly do you need to place it in the pocket. So we come to the end of best practices for hit generation and we'd like to summarize in a few take home message what we have seen in a different section. So very importantly, high quality screening strategy is critical to identify the relevant chemical starting points. And we need to have these relevant chemical starting points, these high quality hits to be successful in our drug discovery efforts. So these are appropriate screening assay, with the right quality, the right throughput, and of course, biological relevance. You need to select the right compound screening library, again, high quality, containing diverse chemical matters, and the right size, depending on your assay system. You need an efficient hit validation flowchart to remove false positive and prove target engagement. This is extremely important. You don't want to waste your time on compounds which are not proven to modulate the target of interest. And finally, integrated hit generation strategies showing that it's usually a good idea to select several hit generation approaches to be successful. Now, chemists obviously have a big role to play in defining the screening strategy. The obvious place where we impact is the selection of the screening library. These are after all chemical compounds. But more than that, if you understand what technologies are available, what head generation approaches are possible, you will be in a much better position to have productive discussions with your biologists, your screening experts to design the best head generation strategies. Please don't hesitate to leave us comments, questions. We'll be happy to get back to you and stay tuned for the next set of best practices in medicinal chemistry.